You may remember from my last video, I was super excited about getting a new custom designed mountain bike camper van. Back around Christmas time, I actually headed down to the converters down in London to have a talk with them about the design and what we were going to put in it. When I arrived in London, I was met by Paul Lambert, who is the guy who pretty much organized this whole thing. He runs an agency called Net Performance that aims to broker these kind of vehicle deals with athletes. We jammed my mega tower and double XL size in the back of his van, and uh, needless to say, it was a lot wider than his van. And then we headed to P-Dubs, the van converters who are gonna trick out my new vehicle. When we arrived, we met the owner, Peter, and he talked me through all the different materials and fabrics and colors that we can put in the new van. And it was super interesting to see in other projects they were working on. Canvases, wood samples, material samples, basically everything. All right, let's take a look. Feels soft like real leather, <laughs> but it's not. Okay. It's actually fake. <laughs> okay. So when you go to Mercedes or Volkswagen and you buy a top of the range Mercedes, you don't actually buy real leather anymore. They haven't been doing that for the past 15 years. They might say it's leather, but it's not. Huh. It's actually fake. But, but they just got better at faking it. They've just got better at faking it. So the back of it, you can see it's not real hide. Hmm. So these are like how the RS3 seats. Okay. Um, what we've done is we've customised them so Volkswagen T5 armrests actually fit on them. <laughs> you would never normally have a bucket seat with armrests, but in a van, it's handy. No, you can't you have the armrests. <laughs> Looking around the workshop, I could see the other projects they were working on and the quality and the level at which they were converting them. And I hate to say it, but it is a little bit better than my current rusty transit. It was super impressive to see and just made me more excited for my own van. I can stand up for you. Look at this. I can't even touch the roof. <sighs> While we were there, we talked with Peter on what kind of things I'd want in my new van. And this is what we came up with. So excuse the rudimentary drawing, but usually what happens, and the way I designed my old van, is you have the bikes in this rear section of the van. And we're gonna do that with a difference. So usually there is a dividing wall at the back, and then the bikes go in this rear segment. And most other vans, especially the T5s, this area here gets turned into storage, kitchen, and all that good stuff you need in a camper van. And we're gonna do that as well, so not too much different, but the one thing I really want is the ability to put my bikes in fully built. Because when you store them in the back, you have to take the front wheel off, and with my massive bikes, you have to take both wheels off. And we don't want that. So the plan is, this segment of wall here is on rails and these rails run the full length of the van and actually while we're here i should put the bed in so we have a rock and roll bed which has this dividing wall attached to it but the whole thing like i said is on rails that run the full length of the van and what we're going to be able to do is this dividing wall and the bed are going to be able to slide all the way up to the front leaving a long section of van which will be big enough to fit my bikes and also these rails will have bike mounts attached into them as well so the bikes can either be put in sideways if you want to have the full living area still available or it can be slid all the way up and you can put the bikes in fully built this is amazing i also wanted a pop top roof with a double bed up top charging area for charging cameras diesel here for those cold Scottish winters, a drying cupboard with the diesel heater linked up to it, an uh, inbuilt 12 volt bike washer, an inbuilt 12 volt air compressor, an awning if I just want to get a little bit of quick shelter. So, all these things together in this T6.1 is going to be the smallest, most practical, most modular biking camper van you can get. 
cannot wait to get it. Since this video happened, P-Dubs have actually started converting my van. I've been sending me little photo and video updates. Ben Cafro's T6.1 coming into the workshop, ready for its conversion. The guys have stripped the van out clean. They have been wiring new electrics for all the different equipment they're going to put in. They've cut holes in the side, they've cut holes in the roof, they put in insulation, run more wiring, they put the pop top roof in, and they built some of the equipment for inside. But because of the whole lockdown thing going on right now, it's not quite finished but I will have it soon. One of the coolest things about this whole project is this van we're designing, the company that's funding it, Cardi Leasing, are gonna make this available to buy and lease. So if you like this, you can get it. It could be yours, you can customize it and you can have this same van, but we need to think of a name for it. So suggestions in the comments. After all that excitement, we went to bed excited to go ride in the next day. I mean, seriously. Come down south, they said. Are we dry? Are we dry? <laughs> Unbelievable. Myself and Paul were joining in on the Pedal and Spoke Bike Shop Christmas ride on what is, without a doubt, the wettest day of the year. Have you ever been riding before, Roddy? No, like I've not ridden south of South Wales. <laughs> oh, really? So I've never been down this end of the country with a bike. Quite excited. Yeah, it'd be good. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Where are we going then? Where are we going to? We're going to go up to Viewpoint. Viewpoint. Pots, crack pipe, Southern Special, Telegraph Row, Logan's Run, Kitty f <laughs> off Dave, <laughs> Barry Knows Best, maybe Barry Knows so Better, uh, John the Bat, yeah, yeah, the, the names, man, we'll he's keep gonna, reading them off. <laughs> he's got it all planned out. Alright, nice. Oh. Oh. I'm wet now. The Pease Lake Trails are in the Surrey Hills area near London and the Surrey Hills are famous for not having very much altitude to them. So the trails are either short and steep or long and flowy. I'd never ridden them before, didn't know what to expect, so I'm just going to show you the best bits of the day. I don't know if that worked, but <laughs> you can't see much. I see through it. It looks good. Oh, oh was it that stump? Holy shit! Blah. How are you getting for a wee cruiser? Well, let's see if Paul can deal with it. The camera pressure. We hit so far. That was a nice gap. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god. Insane. That was an axle deep takeoff. of successfully navigating an asteroid field is approximately 3720 to 1. Never tell me the odds. You know what you're doing. Yeah, me too. Ooh. I got two clips of you and you nearly die in both of them. Okay, there. Uplift system. He's just coasting, look at him. <laughs> Inside line. This is a deadly one. Whoa. Almost hit the tree. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yo! 
Wow! Wow! Nice to see you. Yeah, see you, man. Yeah. Not a bad day considering the weather. We cleaned ourselves off, got some food in, and I have to say, first day riding Surrey Hills was pretty good. I had one more day left on my trip, and for that, we were meeting with GMBN to record a podcast. So day three on Sunday, what we have uh, done this morning is hooked up with GMBN. We're going to do a little podcast this morning, and we've got a, we've got a bigger crew than I thought. I thought it might just be one guy, but no, there's a few. We've got the producer. Producer. Yeah, do that. We have the talent, which is this guy. Oh yeah, I really agree. That's great. Mm. And then we have the filmer slash editor. Okay. And the white balance is all over the place. Hang on. The actual GMBN crew were manned by presenter Henry Quinney, Ben Hislop, the producer, and Jack Gill, the filmer and editor. We recorded about an hour-long podcast chatting about my plans for the year before they all went to crap. And if you want to see that, there's a link in the description. Head over to GMBN. We've got none other than Ben Catherine, who is, if you could do that again, but not sit up to see you. Your head <laughs> <laughs> I had a few hours until my train, so we thought it'd be rude not to go out for a sneaky ride with the GMBN boys and hit some different trails at Pease Lake. <laughs> yeah, it's not dried out. My shoes are wet again. Locals got a lead. <laughs> Follow Henry, he knows where he's going. The climbing king. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh! That. Henry's line is amazing! Yo! Yeah! Oh, they're sick! Inside lines from Henry. Woo! <laughs> Take the dry line. Strava! <laughs> oh no, I can feel someone behind me. That's a good shot. Oh, free jump. My man. No idea where I'm going. Uh oh. oh. There's a couple of good gaps going on though. Well, I think it's pretty undeniable. That was a pretty rad trip down to London and super excited about getting the new van. If you don't want to miss that, you can subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, you can hit the like button if you want. And I got to say massive thanks to Paul for organizing this whole thing. He took me back to the train station, sent me home, and off I went back to Scotland. I'll be back down in a bit to get that new van. Tune in next time for stuff. <laughs> Nice. It's quite dark in here. Oh, sick corners. Oh, landed in a breaking bump.